I got a special project today. Today I will be installing my Link ECU in my MR2. So I picked up a Link G4X a plug and play ECU for my 91 MR2 Turbo and I'll be installing it today. First thing I'm going to do is replace the battery with a brand new one. There's been one in there for five or six years now and the car has been sitting for a lot of that time so it's always best to start out with a known good battery especially when you're dealing with the electronics. New battery in, let's see if it'll start. Now that there's a fresh battery in, the next thing to do is to pop your trunk, hopefully it's not as messy as mine, and start taking out, there's gonna be a couple clips around the carpet here. Uh, so your car might not have them. I think I put this one in a while ago. Uh, you gotta pull those clips out just like you would any other automotive clip. <clears throat> and the ECU lives pretty much right here. After breaking off all the clips, I mean gently removing them, there's gonna be three 10 millimeter bolts securing the ECU in a place. So we'll take those out, and then we're gonna remove the wiring harness. Now mine has been converted to Gen 3 electronics, even though it's a Gen 2 motor. So I'm using the, ST2, the ST205 Link ECU for this. I won't have to wire in the Gen 3 map sensor and the IAT sensor, because I already have those installed. Now the bolts are off. Before you remove the cables from the ECU, I would recommend uh, disconnecting the negative terminal of the battery or uh, pulling the 15 amp EFI fuse in your engine bay. And then once that's done, you can go ahead and pull those cables right out. Now that the old ECU is out, we're gonna take out these four screws in each corner to remove this lid here. All right, let's open it up and see what we got. And what we have here is a factory Gen 3 ECU. We're gonna have to take off the rest of this fun stuff you're going to want to put it somewhere where it can't get damaged from any ESD, so if you have an ESD safe bag or something of the sort where you can put it on, that's what I would recommend doing after that. To get this out, it's more of the same. Some, some more screws here that you've got. On the back here, there's also, also ones that you got to get out from here. And then once you got that back casing open, you get the screws out that anchor the board. There's going to be a total of five of them. These screws have to come out. There's another one under here too. So this bracket needs to come off as well. Some more Phillips screw fun. All right, so four screws total here. I believe this holds on the MOSFET heat sinks. Glad I found my bit case. It's definitely number two bit for this thing to come out. Not a number one. So now this should be able to easily lift out. A little bit of resistance here and there. I'm not gonna force it, but it's kind of work this around. And out. There we go. ECU has been separated from the case. So now we have our Link G4X, which I'm going to be taking out of the box and putting into this case. I was able to lay the ECU in just, just as I needed to. It fits perfectly. There's no cutting required. The only thing I do have to do is drill a small hole so I can pass through the ECU port. I'm sorry, the, the USB port, which is that guy down there, that little tail coming off of it. So I got to figure out a good spot where I want to run that through and uh, I don't have any grommets with me but I do recommend if you're going to do this way you got to put a grommet through there so this cable doesn't rub up against there. That's something I'll probably do this weekend. After some consideration I decided that the best place for the hole to be would be around here which would be the top left side of the ECU. I don't want it directly on top in case I open the trunk and water gets in runs down there it's much easier for this ECU to get damaged so through the side here uh, with the grommet eventually that'll be again this weekend uh, I'm just gonna drill a hole here with a step drill and then run that cable through there and it's gonna be pretty stress-free routing from uh, from the looks of it I'm gonna double check the size because I don't need the hole to be too big 
And I'm also gonna have to blow out all the metal shavings in there because you definitely don't want any little metal conductive parts messing around and bouncing around in your ECU. All right, so that is the hole. I took a file and I deburred it as much as I could on account of uh, for the last time I don't have a grommet yet. So now I can drop this ECU in, putting this little dongle through there first for this cable. There we go. There we are. Cable's through. And now we can go ahead and start putting the screws back in the ECU to secure it to itself. All right, and as an added layer of security, I went ahead and added some electrical tape around this cable because I know it was bothering you. Definitely not bothering me, that's for sure. Until I get Uno Groma. That sounds more like Grandma the Grommet. Now it's closed back up. You can install it again with those three 10 millimeter bolts. But first, I'm going to plug it in with all those connectors. All right, the Link ECU has been installed, and the cable for the USB is here. And also, this weekend, I will be putting an expansion loom in that as well so I can monitor more channels like uh, wideband, uh, fuel pressure, and flex fuel. So now what we have to do is connect this USB, or put your EFI fuse back in or your negative terminal, whichever one you did, and then connect your USB to your laptop. I've got USB from the link going into the PC, so now I'm going to go in, put my key to the on position, but not turn the car on, so I can start my pre-start configuration. If this is your very first time connecting the PC to the laptop uh, or even putting electricity to your ECU, you're going to need to unlock it. So to do that, you're going to want to go to ECU Unlock. You're going to have to provide your serial number to your link dealer and then from there they will uh, send you an unlock code and that unlock code you'll hit enter there, unlock it there, and then you'll see that the ECU is enabled. Once that's done, you can start the pre-start configuration. We're gonna be following along with the install manual here and I suggest you would do the same instead of just watching this video if you're gonna be setting yours up in case I miss a step or if I do something that varies from your ECU. What I did was click uh, ECU controls and then upgrade firmware. So I noticed that there is a new firmware available for my ECU, even though this one was just released on June 30th. So this one, uh, focus is newer. We're gonna hit upgrade. I've read the version notes. Not all of them though. Warning program. Uh, under no circumstances should we leave the ignition on. Yeah, why not? All right, let's hope we don't break it. Okay, that took all of about a minute and a half. Heard the fuel pump kick on as soon as it was done and the fuel pump is off now. So I'm gonna hit okay here. I'm going to hit close and memory loaded successful one more settings please review okay it's probably just because it's just because it's updated but we see that we are online uh, maybe you don't see that because it doesn't want to focus either way i am connected to the ecu now i'm going to start with the base configuration so with the base configuration we're going to go and load exactly what file we need so go to file open and I, sorry for the glare and I'm not doing a screen record because I'm being lazy. Although, you know, the instructions are clearly written out in, in your instruction manual. This is for a Celica ST205. Even though it's an MR2, they share the same ECU. So I'm gonna select the Celica S205 and it's gonna be in whatever directory you installed it in. Your, uh, your PC link software. So yes, we are going to download those into the ECU. And that's just gonna take a minute. Do you wish to carry out a store command to the ECU? Yes. Store successfully completed. So now it's gonna refresh and we can begin with the map sensor calibration. For map sensor calibration, you hit ECU controls, then map sensor calibration. Do you want to perform a map sensor calibration? Oh yes, we do. Calibration command completed successfully. Okay, now that the map sensor is calibrated, next thing we're gonna do is go to ECU controls and TPS setup. Your throttle position sensor is crucial. So what it tells you here is to depress the throttle to the fully open position. Now my USB cable is a bit short. I don't have anyone here to help me at the moment. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm going to slightly close this, hopefully without pinching this cable too much. I'm gonna move my laptop over onto the trunk. 
I'm gonna pop the hood and then manually move the throttle since it's not a drive-by wire. So I will be moving this throttle body open all the way the throttle cable while pressing OK at the same time. I'm not gonna be able to film that because I don't have a place to put my camera down, but you get the idea. It's definitely better if you have two people to do this. Once you do that, it'll ask you to put the throttle to closed, hit OK, and now your TPS should be calibrated. Once that's calibrated, we're going to go ahead and click this sidebar option here for ECU settings, and then we're going to go to IAT, which is under analog inputs, and we're going to verify that it's reading the correct value. The next thing you do is going to be a trigger calibration. I can't walk you through that process now because I don't have a buddy and my timing light's at my buddy's shop, or my buddy's house rather. That's some setup you're gonna have to look up online. It should be easy, you just match the, the crank timing to what, or the ignition timing to what the ECU timing should be. Okay, so now it's time to read the first time startup instructions and see what I gotta do next. Before I start, I hit uh, F12 and then I went to the general tab to take a look at all the sensors to make sure they're reading correct data. The map and the BAP, the barometric air pressure as well as the manifold air pressure are both reading just about the same, both at the 99 to 100, so they're, they're in sync as much as they can be. The IAT is 28 degrees Celsius, which should be about right because I did have this running for about 10 minutes uh, before I went and installed the ECU, so that, that is about right. Um, everything else kind of looks good, so I think it is time to hit that key on and off and on and double check all these values and then I can start cranking it. All right, sorry for the beeping, because the door's open. Now that everything's been double and triple checked, we're gonna give it a try. You hear that fuel pump kicking on? Ooh. That started pretty good. Let's go check the runtime values. All right, it is idling pretty rough, but We do have we do have our sensors working. It is installed and it does run. <laughs> Not great. After this, you should definitely get it towed to a tuner or if you think it's running good enough and the values all look good, then gently drive it to a tuner place so you can get it tuned or get it street tuned or whatever your cup of tea is. So that's gonna be it for this video. Make sure you like it if you liked it. Share it with a friend if you think it might be helpful for them. Remember to subscribe because more content's coming soon. I'll be building this thing up pretty good, then be doing a dyno session after it's all done, and then we can guess what kind of horsepower it's gonna make. So thanks for watching as always, and remember, keep it foul.